that happens with a lot of us when we gain sympathy for the person and really start to see them as a kind soft human we still see that even when they're being hurtful towards us hey friends for this video, I don't think that I'm going to start out by dancing or celebrating because it is one of the more morbid topics, but also one of my favorite topics because it is something so personal to me and a close group of friends that I have. Although it makes my heart heavy doing research on why people stay in these awful, toxic, terrible relationships, it also does my heart good. It helps me understand my past young self a little bit more and the mistakes that she made, but she didn't know back then. It's also helping get out the information that could possibly save someone's life, whether physically, seriously saving their life or saving their life because I'm saving you time and effort in staying with someone who does not deserve it. Thank you so much for clicking this video. I have a couple of more, but you will find out more when you hit subscribe. Every subscribe button and every like helps. Number one is that you had a beautiful beginning. Honestly, I don't think there's ever been a toxic relationship that starts out with being overtly toxic in the beginning. Yes, there were red flags and warning signs when you think back at it or in hindsight view, but really it's beautiful. It's amazing. It's actually a dream. And the toxic significant other or ex or whoever they make it that way. For this, I say stop chasing the sunset. There's a beautiful quote that I found a couple of weeks ago saying that sunsets remind us that endings can be beautiful. And although I totally agree with this quote on most things, this is one of the very few times where you need to let that go. You can't always seek closure with someone who doesn't deserve it. You can't have a beautiful ending with everyone, but you can create a beautiful ending with yourself as soon as you move on. Number two is that you see potential. Sometimes you catch a glimpse of them having the kindest heart, or maybe sometimes they talked about goals that they had that could possibly help others. You get excited because you see this amazing person that could come out of them, but it won't. You hold on tightly to the greatness that they could possess as soon as they just release it, but they're not acting on their gifts or talents or skills that could be amazing. You get caught up in the hero complex. It's time to hang up your cape. Know the difference between potential and position. One, yes, they can potentially be amazing, but what they do in their current position, is that going to help them get to their potential? My toxic ex that I speak so much about because it really did alter my life and I don't want anybody else to go through what I went through, he was a really good actor. Duh, because he definitely acted with me, but there were some times when he went on stage and he could capture you in the moment. He wanted to be able to direct movies and have a big house and nice cars for us in the future and maybe I could even act in the movies and that was the plan. But then he started skipping school and then he dropped out of school junior year and he became so much more focused on, well, cheating on me, but also drugs and just very dangerous lifestyle. His current position wasn't lined up with all of his amazing potential. I couldn't be the hero anymore because for five years it was dragging me down. That was my full-time job. If this is a big reason why it's holding you back from leaving this person, know that leaving them can help be their wake-up call if you really care that much for them to find their potential. After I left, yes, my toxic ex went through a very slippery slope and no, he didn't have the greatest ending, but he did go back to school for his GED and he did go to college and he did have a happy lifestyle in Atlanta, Georgia, somewhere where he always wanted to end up being. You can help yourself and them by doing what's right for you. The next one is that you're chasing the high. 
Toxic people are known for their mood swings. They go up and down on their roller coaster emotions and they will take you with them for the ride. Those lows, they get so dark so quickly, but those highs, when they're treating you like royalty, where they make you feel like you're the best person and place to be on this earth, when you feel valued, that is a high that you want to keep so you keep being with them even though there's more lows than highs. My tip for this one is fall in love with chasing stability and peace. In 2016, my focus was finding peace in my life. I had gotten an amazing boyfriend that year. In 2019, my goal was to find stability. I had gotten an incredible fiance, I have an amazing life, and that same year we got married and I have a home where I feel safe and cherished and valued and I never had that same tense and whirlwind of emotions that I did with my toxic ex. Number four is trauma bonding. This makes so much sense to me. My therapist brought this up to me and I've been studying it ever since. Trauma bonding is when you connect with someone deeply over a similar darkness from your past. For me, me and my toxic ex, we were both depressed. We also had very low self-esteem and trigger warning, we were both contemplating at times of taking our own life. We were contemplating that before we had gotten together and then when we did get together i was the first one to talk about trigger warnings harm and sometimes my feelings of maybe i shouldn't be here and because i opened up with him he was very quick to be like no you should be here you're amazing you're this you're that and he really built me up there's a part of me that Admittedly, I have to thank him. Without him, I don't really know where I'd be during that season. But then because of the trauma bonding and we met and we fell deeper for each other because of that same darkness, I had to spend the next couple of years talking him off the ledge. There's this R&B singer that sickens me and I don't really want to say the name, but R. Kelly. He's been known to open up about his traumatic, toxic, dark elements of his childhood to his victims. Before he really entraps his victims, he starts out with grooming them by telling them about his very dark childhood or the things that happened to him. A lot of times his victims can relate to that same trauma so then they sympathize with him and then they want to stay with him. They go back to seeing that great potential that he could have. That happens with a lot of us when we gain sympathy for the person and really start to see them as a kind, soft human, we still see that even when they're being hurtful towards us. For this, I challenge you to get plugged into a church group or a community or talk to your friends or a therapist, someone who's going to either understand professionally what you have gone through in your past or is going through right now, or they have gone through it. There are communities for people who are figuring out how to get past their depression or low self-esteem. Volunteering is a great way to do it as well. Look at me plugging volunteering because I do love volunteering and I do think that it is like a good way, another form of meditation almost. It does help you. I have some best friends that have never been depressed in their life and because of that, I felt more comfortable speaking to my toxic ex because I felt like, wow, here I am, I have someone that understands me. I especially didn't have anyone in my family that openly admitted that they were depressed and if they did, they we didn't really stay in contact too much. They were too busy solving their own problems. It is so important to get connected to someone with the same me too moment. Get with people who can do that for you and help provide that you are not alone in this big world by yourself doing this on your own. Get someone other than your toxic significant other. Number five kind of hits home for me, unstable childhood. 
for many victims of a toxic relationship, this is all that they know. In my most popular video, I have spoken in detail about my relationship with my mother and how it wasn't always the greatest. Even when it wasn't physical, it was emotional and mental and there was constant mind games going on. Well, when I met my toxic ex, like I said, it started out beautiful and grand and then it started slipping. And when I look back, even in the beautiful moments, there was still some toxicity, but I didn't notice it because that's where I came from. I had gotten used to it at home. So being with my toxic ex felt like home. For me, when I met my husband who was completely not toxic, it was very suspicious. I kept looking at him, raising my eyebrow because I was like, what do you want from me? Like, you really mean that you wanna be nice to me and you don't want anything else? So are you gonna stay nice to me? Maybe you shouldn't be so nice to me because I'm gonna get used to it and I'm gonna want you to be nice all the time. And he's like, good, that's what I want. I want you to feel like you deserve someone who is genuinely kind to you just because you deserve it. That was so weird to me. <laughs> My advice for this one is if you are seeing similarities from your dark childhood and your relationship with your significant other, ask yourself, do you wanna be a parent someday? If you do, you need to break these patterns now. And a good way to break those patterns is by taking care of yourself and leaving that toxic situation or else your kid is going to endure the same thing. If you don't want kids, that is totally fine. Good for you for knowing what you want in your life, but you still need to take care of yourself by not falling into those patterns. My second part of advice for this same topic of unstable childhood is that you find yourself around a healthy relationship. A lot of times, like I said, I didn't feel comfortable with a healthy relationship or a significant other that wasn't trying to harm me who actually had their best intentions for me. How can you know that there is something so good out there if you've never seen an example? Plug yourself with real life healthy couples. Find some in your community, find some on Facebook, maybe, mm, you know, I usually recommend Pinterest, but like Pinterest, they show all of those pictures of those couples making out in bed, which is super cute, but who's taking those pictures? Yeah, and it just feels very hallmark to me. So find a real life couple, a real life example, go on YouTube and look up healthy couples or signs of a healthy relationship. I believe I'm gonna post about that topic soon. The next one is you believe you don't deserve anything better. Yeah, your toxic significant other is not fun to be with, but sometimes you're not either. <laughs> You can be a little bit tough to handle. You may not always start the fight, but you definitely like to keep it on and you have your own tactics and schemes to make the relationship hell for both of you. It can be a self-esteem thing. I believe that this was the best that I deserved. I had a handsome boyfriend that, yeah, sometimes he was rough around the edges, but he accepted me for me. I thought he cared for me, so I thought this was the best that I could get, especially because I struggled with the idea of my weight, which I've talked about, and I've struggled about my appearance, my hair, I was chemically altering it so that it could be straightened just like how he likes, but it was also breaking off so my hair would get shorter and shorter and shorter, and I felt even lower about myself. Any time that I felt low about myself, I had someone to confine in that one, understood depression, two, understood low self-esteem, and three, was normally there around for me to be able to voice my opinion and voice my very deep, dark thoughts about myself too. My tip to you is to get in the mindset that you deserve something better. It sounds kind of crazy, but start saying it to yourself often. Repeat after me. I deserve someone better. I deserve something amazing. I deserve someone who cares for me. I deserve to be loved. I deserve to love myself. These are some of the things that I started saying to myself. And at first it was cringy and it's a little weird, but 
I started saying it on autopilot. Even to this day, I still catch myself saying it. And because you keep saying it to yourself, trust that you will behave differently. You won't really engage in those fights with your toxic significant other like you used to, because in order to deserve someone better, you become someone better, right? You will attract someone who wants to be in a healthy relationship and you will stop enduring the toxicity that your significant other subjects you to. You will know for sure that you deserve better. Number seven is that you invested so much time into this person. If you're like me, you don't like when things go to waste. I really don't like one-time use plastics. We're actually trying to get out a lot of plastics out of our household. I don't like wasting time. Multitasking is my favorite thing to do. If I'm running errands, I find the quickest route in a straight line between point A and point B so that I can get back home without having to take too many trips and turns. And the same thing with the person. When I invest my time, my energy, my love, my heart, my care, my soul into a person, it is so hard for me to let go of them even when they're doing me wrong. If you invested your heart and your soul into this person, you may feel like you don't know who you are without them. That was a fear of mine. When I wanted to leave my toxic ex, there were times that I thought, but who am I gonna call if I'm struggling? Who am I gonna turn to? I've already been isolated from other family members and friends. I only have one person that I can really count on to listen to me. And even if they're not truly listening to me, at least I have a person physically there to hear my voice. For this one, I suggest reconnecting with the friends that your significant other possibly isolated you from. The ones that care for you, the ones that want what's best for you, the ones that probably told you that you don't need to be with this person and so you stop talking to them because you really do care for this person, but now you're starting to see that they're the ones that love you. If you can't reconnect with your old friends, try to find a different group of encouraging people who would genuinely care for you and speak life into you. I also suggest rediscovering your self-worth. Start finding your value. What are your gifts? What are your talents? But even dig deeper than that. Who are you? You gotta sit down and start figuring out who you are as a person without your significant other. That goes for if your relationship is toxic or not. You still need to have your own form of independence and self-value. You need to know who you are as your own person. Number eight is fear. I most likely want to dive deeper into this in a different video because this has its own category. You can be scared of your significant other hurting you hurting themselves or hurting someone that you care about. I was afraid because my significant other had very personal pictures of me. And if I ever said that, I think that we should go our separate ways, he would threaten to send them to my mom or my dad. Because of this, I ended up staying for several more years than I wanted to, and I had a lot of friends that were questioning, what does he have on you that's making you stay with him? And that was it. For this, I suggest going to loveisrespect.org. Their website is phenomenal. They will speak to you in a way that you understand that's not condescending and they really do care about you and your situation without judging you. And most importantly, they have resources to help you get out of that situation. Their website does not use any cookies and they even have a fail safe system if your significant other is constantly looking through your phone or your history. Love is respect.org should not show up in your history. They even have a new feature where it's a purple X in the top right hand corner. And if your significant other is coming around, you double tap that X and they are not able to see what you were just doing. And the last one is that you have hope that they will change. I'm gonna tell you something that I did not wanna hear and I definitely did not want to believe, but if you're sitting around waiting for them to change, know this. They're not. I know you're probably looking at me and going like, but Takora, you don't even know them. You don't know my person. My relationship is different from your relationship. Well, I can easily say that 
even if they do change, which they can because we're all human and it's beautiful and whatnot, they're not gonna change while you're around. You can't ask a hungry wolf to not view what they view as prey as an ally. Your toxic significant other is not all of a sudden gonna view you as worthy of respect when all of this time they've seen you up underneath their foot. Your presence alone pulls something so dark out of them. If you really want them to change, leave. That strikes change in them. Now, maybe sometimes this is the very, I think almost 1% exception. Maybe they will change into a better person and they'll never become toxic again. Maybe they're gonna work through it, but they have to take the actions after you leave by going into therapy and really working on themselves. Other than that, let's go back to believing that you deserve something better. Like I said, loveisrespect.org is so good on not judging you. They also have a lot of good tips and advice. And one of their quotes that I read says this, while you may be unwilling or unable to leave your relationship right now, it's important to remember that abusive partners are unlikely to change their behavior. I've seen it, I've lived it several times. It only works after you leave and they still might be toxic after you leave. That's not fun to think about. But the thing is, you're not gonna be able to change them. I'm sorry, you're not. All right, friends, thank you so much for watching, but I know something that you probably think that I don't. If you are watching this, you are either one, trying to figure out how are people staying in these stupid, crazy, toxic, angry, crappy relationships? What is convincing them to stay? Two, you've been in a toxic relationship and you need affirmation to prove that you've been in it. Maybe you'd like to know the signs because you were probably gaslighted into thinking that you were in a healthy relationship when your soul was telling you that you have a reason to be hurting and you need to leave. Or three, you know that you are in a toxic relationship right now and you just wanted that little bit more of proof because you feel the warning signs, you feel the red flags, and you wanted somebody to tell you that you're not crazy for knowing what you know. I'm that person telling you right now, if this is your situation, get out. <sighs> okay, although it's not my funnest thing to talk about, I really do love talking about this. I hope that you found some kind of way of enjoying this. If this has helped you or you think that it's going to help a friend, definitely send it to them, share it, like it, subscribe so that I could keep talking about it even more. It sounds a lot better when it's coming from me, someone that they don't know personally than you. They can't really shoot the messenger. They don't even know who I am, Takora Divine, by the way. I hope that you have a blessed, safe holiday season. And whenever time you're watching this, I hope that you're just making the right decisions because honestly, you don't just deserve someone better. You deserve the best. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.